Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. Johnny Tsunami speaking. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Daniel Masters, out of Louisville. I uh, want to talk some revolution. want to talk some shop. And I got just a few more pages on my uh, Louisville Revolutions document here. The Louisville occupation has a moment. We had a moment in 2011 uh, to make significant change to actually show the power apparatus and that we have real legitimate political power, um, which would be respected and achieving respect is a good thing. With We could have uh, showed a third party independent candidate movement is sustainable and possible here that people are uh, frustrated and there's a lot of discontent. So. Um, in fact, I think just sitting and occupying there and having picnics is just being fish in a barrel. There's only a matter of time before the um, midnight raid comes down and the uh, uh, metro's finest boys in blue. So I think it's um, a recipe for the media to paint us up as inconsequential and ignore us. Uh, with Oakland, it doesn't look like the end of this thing is going to end well. I've been riding on the bus and I don't own a tent nor a hat, but once I get equipped, I'll be an occupier by the year's end or the year's beginning. Um, so would you have to get a permit to shut the street down? We probably have to get permits to have marches. Steve Taylor said that he would speak for the Ad Busters thing, October 29th. Uh, when we march, we'll be passing out flyers. Is there a way to print up a shitload of flyers for future events? We'd have a march going over the old bridge. You know, I think that would get a lot of publicity. Remember, remember the 5th of November. We have massive street protests Louisville-wide for GOTV efforts. Get out the vote. Encourage registered voters to go vote. Uh, register new voters up until one month before the election. For the next two months, you will have a lot of new voters, hopefully, to to be voting. Um, officer Shamar Thomas, he's the one that actually showed the breaking point between when the police officers start siding with the people and when they start recognizing themselves with the people versus when they um, are the enemies of the people. Louisville Day of Rage. I don't know if we should be in Jefferson Park and that be our Tahir Square in Jefferson Park. The courthouse there has some good steps, and if we had a microphone, I think it would be a good spot to speak from. The Louisville Slugger Stadium would be a fun spot to take if there would be a rally. Um, I don't know. I think a, a, a couple of days of rage would be a good idea. Have a protest, uh, anti-police brutality riots for the first one. Uh, Anti-economic inequality or riots, a uh, protest. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no riots. We're not going to be violent. A prolonged peaceful uh, revolution. Prolonged peaceful, where the people stay out on the streets and the the police have no choice but to side on our side because they're in solidarity with us. We're not being violent. We're just going out to the streets and we're demanding change. November 6, 2011. Um, I suggested to have like a farmer's march to get to some of the rural folks in. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But like I think actually having, um, it's it's not that I'm anti-farmers, just I don't want to polarize city people. It's a city, you know, it's Louisville's a city. So uh, I think having an anti, you know, economic inequality, anti-poverty, anti-homelessness uh, protest, anti-police uh, br br brutality protest, having protests for... Uh, against the corrupt bankers. I think these are all good ideas. Um, and this is uh, November 5th to the November 8th. So have like three days of day of rage right before the election happens. So the election is going to happen uh, what day this year? To the first November and Tuesday, right? It says when is election day on 2012 it's Tuesday the 6th of November so remember remember the 6th of November the 6th of November is going to be election day and you're going to have five days before the 6th of November so those five days uh, start from November 1st there should be a uh, uh, citywide protest massive demonstrations out on the streets November 1st November 1st 2012 and I think that we need to have clear agenda, exactly what it is that we want. Here's exactly what we want. We want uh, more uh, programs for the homeless. We want to end the war. We want uh, uh, discrimination against uh, gay people, homophobia. We need to get rid of homophobia and racism and sexism. And we need to sit down and have these conversations and talk about it. We need more funding for education and health care. Uh, we need more opportunities for our children. We need uh, 
more jobs. So there's a lot of things we need, actually, especially in Kentucky. We've got a whole uh, a banquet, a whole uh, uh, gauntlet of problems. Just go down the gauntlet. We just have a ton of issues to be faced with. We're some, some of the worst statistics in the nation. So majority of Louisville is under 44 years old, which is perfect. That means Louisville is a young city. The majority of Louisville is under 44 years old. So uh, I don't know if we should trust anybody over 30 years old, but uh, it just it does show that most people are young. Louisville is a young city. It's also a good city to start a movement since there has been no movements here before. <laughs> Relatively very few. There's a, a black power um, protest, and then there is anti-black people protest, and I guess now there's some... Uh, anti-gay protests, so it just seems like it's protest of hate. That's the only time white people get out of their chairs is to hate. So this protest, these demonstrations will be a progressive cause. It's economic inequality. It's about the money in your pocket, okay? The rich are not giving us jobs. They actually fight to limit as many jobs as they have because labor is the biggest cost. They don't want to employ any more people than what they have to. The only time that they do employ more people is when they have so much business that they need somebody to keep up for customer service. The way that they have so many, much business is by having a robust middle class. So you have a robust middle class, a middle class that is, um, that, you know, that's popping, that's got a ton of money, they got, uh, they're working, they got money, they're doing okay, and they can spend that money, they have disposable income, and by that exchange of income, that exchange of paper, uh, goods and services, that's good for the economy. That's that that's a strong, healthy economy. That's how you can tell it's a strong, healthy economy. This is also a reason why I knew Warsaw did not know what they were doing. They wanted to make the uh, 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 yard sales. There's yard sales that were being held at the BP parking lot. They wanted to make that illegal. But that's goods and services. That's economy. That's how our economy works. And if you're not allowing yard sales, then you're basically saying that regular people aren't allowed to engage in the uh, commodity trade just uh, you can only buy new products from corporations and that's it you know so um, I think a march across the bridge would get a lot of uh, a lot of publicity a march across the bridge would um, show I don't know they're working on the bridge but if it's not fixed by November I mean uh, that's that's ridiculous uh, Russ Parr, they have, uh, they got, they got good parties with loudspeakers at the convention center. I don't know. I think you know Russ Parr could come, or you could have Rebel Diaz, Immortal Technique, Rage Against the Machine. You could have a really sweet music festival. Hell, that could be the Day of Rage. That's what starts the Day of Rage. The uh, uh, have a, a music festival downtown in a public park, and Inve invite uh, Rage Against the Machine here, and just rock out and have a good time. Or maybe we can get um, some farm, you know, somebody to actually let us stay in a farm and have a Woodstock here. A Woodstock, that'd be fun. Then we get to see ourselves and build those relationships up. A Woodstock Revolution, that'd be sweet. The, the Louisville Woodstock Revolution. <laughs> um, we could have anti-incumbent protest. 12% is what voted in the primary, 25% is what voted in the governor's election. So with these low turnout rates, the majority of Kentuckians are not voting for the politicians. So the politicians in office right now have no democratic legitimacy. They, they want to say, well, the people elected them. No, they didn't. The fucking people didn't elect them. The fucking people stood out of the elections because they didn't have any choice. They didn't have any good options, so they didn't vote. Or they um, are too stupid to know to vote. So between those two things... Um, not having good choices, which those are both equally, they're the opposites almost, but they're equally appalling. The fact that there's low education and no civics in our schools, that's something that needs to change. And uh, if there's no good choices, why should somebody get out and vote? Why should I vote for a corrupt system? I'm not going to vote for somebody I don't know, that I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to vote in favor of a system that is uh, corrupt. Give me some honest candidates. If I got some honest candidates, I'll vote. And I think that's what we need. I think we need some honest candidates. And I think we got chance, actually, now to keep on getting more honest candidates out there. Um, we have, uh, you can still run, uh, register to vote as a write-in candidate, as a write-in candidate. And I think you got up till a month right before the election to run as a write-in candidate. So whoever's up for election, 
uh, they should face some opposition. They should face some opposition uh, in their districts. I'm not sure I've been in this district for two years here in Louisville. I graduated at University of Louisville. So, um, you know, I, I would be allowed to run. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to check it out. But I, I would rather not run, and I'd rather find other people who are willing to run and talk to them and see what platform and issues that they're going to adopt and see which direction they're going to go in uh, and, and champion them like hell. So that way, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't. I'm not confident with running a campaign right now. That's that's the only reason. So the um, Harriet Tubman said, I freed a thousand slaves, and then I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew that they were slaves. This is true of a lot of people. This is Harriet Tubman. This is during the days of slavery. I could have sl saved so many more people who were straight up slaves in bondage on farms and plantations. We need to get out of here. No, I'm not a slave. Why should I leave? I got it so good here. Because uh, you're a slave. Well, I don't feel like a slave. I feel like it's okay. There's an argument between wage slavery and, um, I guess, real slavery. And wage slavery is what we have today. There's so many wage slaves all over the place today where you rent your body out. You rent your body and your services out uh, for money. And the argument was that you would treat something that you own better than you uh, would treat something that you rent. And that's true. If you own a car, if you own a house, you would treat that better than if you had to rent those things. So um, rent, uh, wage slavery is actually more... Uh, uh, deprecating than regular slavery since it's just a temporary agreement and everybody that's involved knows this. Tupac has a, um, uh, a awesome, the sweetest line that Tupac has. They got a war on the streets and a war in the Middle East, but they don't have a war on poverty, but they got a war on drugs so the police can bother me. So this is Tupac in 1992 saying truth 19 years ago. It sadly still applies today. R.I.P. Tupac. I guess I still want to actually talk more about the electoral strategy. So, like, Newt Gingrich is right. When you are running for office, you have a bullhorn and you have power. You have power, then you have the power to shape the debate and talk about the issues that you believe are important. He branded Obama as the food stamp president, and that's going to stick. Newt Gingrich also is the first one to compare the, the mosque in 9-11 uh, downtown um, Manhattan as the, you know, the Nazis and Jews rhetoric, he says it would be like, you know, putting a big Nazi monument, you know, at um, Auschwitz, something like that. So, like, Newt Gingrich is right when you're a candidate for office, you have a bullhorn, and you can highlight a lot of things that other people could not highlight. So, since I am not going to run myself, then what would I do when I'm looking at is what, how would I... If I put myself in those position, if I am a person who is running for office, okay, and I gotta, I gotta research some of this stuff in Louisville. I know there's an election coming up, and I don't think all city council members are up. I know the mayor doesn't uh, have to worry about an election for another two years, another two years, okay. So Mayor Fisher will see some opposition uh, from somebody, okay. Somebody will run against Mayor Fisher, and I'll champion that somebody, uh, if only just to get Mayor Fisher out. I don't like the way Mayor Fisher has treated the Occupy movement. He's more worried about uh, the the uh, what it looks like for the city. Oh my God, there's homeless people that's public, you know, that's out there in the public, and people can see the homeless people. We can't do that. We can't have the homeless actually out on the streets. If people knew that there was all this homeless here in our country, then or in this city, then they wouldn't want to spend money and you know all the rest. So it's it's a show. It's a show. Mayor Fisher doesn't actually give a shit about the homeless. He doesn't give a shit about solving the homeless problem and helping the poor people. He just wants to make sure they're pushed underneath the carpet. Nobody sees what's going on. And that's the reason for the camping ban. The camping ban's against Occupy, against the 99%, and it's against the homeless. He wants to be able to fuck with the homeless whenever he wants to. So they said, oh, they recognize the loophole in our laws, and, you know, we have to do all this and do that. Yeah, well... Fuck your lawn. Seven thousand dollars you spent on the lawn just to be able to pass that fucking law. Fuck you, you fucking dickhead. Seven thousand dollars. That was a ploy. You spent that money just to uh, turn around and use it as justification to screw the occupation over. It ain't no thing though. I think the park looks better. Good. It's about time you spent seven thousand dollars on something we could actually see for ourselves 
and I went to the park. Every time I go to the park, it's completely empty. You want to talk about it being an obstruction to people using that park? I want no obstruction. That's the first time that park was used. Founders Park was first, the first time Founders Park was used was by Occupy Louisville. Founders Park, one dollar, Quarters Companies. So Mayor Fisher doesn't mind selling Founders Park out for one fucking dollar to Quarters Companies. Um, but solving the homeless problem, he's not going to do. Allowing the 99% to enjoy it and be able to um, showcase how free we are here, he doesn't give a shit. Mayor Fisher, you ain't as good as I thought you was going to be. And that's quite disappointing.